Yes, we love you, Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we join our faith. We join our faith with your precious people on tonight as we get ready to go into the Word of God. Minister to your people tonight. Make it so simple that even a child can understand what the Holy Ghost is saying to your people on tonight. Bless your people beyond measure through the Word of God. Let the Word take root in the hearts of your people. Let it bring peace. Let it bring understanding. Let it bring comfort tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ, somebody say Amen. Oh, <laughs> God is able. God is able to do just what He said He would do. Oh, my God, my God. He is a good God tonight. Come on, let's just put our hands together and give our God praise. Hallelujah. Almighty God, you are tonight. Have your way tonight, God. Minister to us through the Word of God as we teach your people the Word tonight. My God, my God, my God, my God, my God. Don't you just love Him with everything in you on tonight? Praise God, praise God, and I pray to God. I'm sure most of you, I'm sure all of us are doing our best to protect and keep ourselves safe. We have faith in God, but we also have common sense. Amen? And we got responsibilities, and we are not snake handlers. We don't tempt God and do, and do stupid things in times like this. Amen? And bring a reproach to the kingdom of God. He's given us wisdom. He's given us knowledge. He's given us understanding. He's given us, uh, he's given us the wisdom to be responsible. Amen? And in times like this, it pays to listen to the authorities, the people in government, and, and, do, and just do what they are asking us to do. Amen? Come on, somebody. Come on. We got faith, but we also got common sense. Come on now. Talk back to me. <laughs> so on tonight, praise God, it's good to be here again with all of you. On tonight, we are talking about you have a comforter. You have a comforter. I'm teaching on the Holy Spirit on tonight. I'm teaching on a, on something that's crucial. Anytime you see the Lord Jesus Christ or the Apostle Paul is spending several chapters talking about, talking about a specific subject, it tells you that that subject it is vitally and cru it's it's crucial to our walk with God are you hearing me on tonight and on tonight I want to teach from the word of God you have a comforter I want you to repeat those words and let's make it personal I want you to say it tonight I have a comforter say it I have a comforter you need to know that tonight Excuse me. I want you to say it. I have a comforter. And this comforter that you have tonight, it's not just any kind of a comforter. Now, I really want you to pay attention to what I'm teaching you on tonight. For some of you, you will have to go over this message over and over. For some of you, this is maybe some of your first time hearing. For some of you, this may be a repeat. But it is very important that we continue to teach and teach and teach the Word of God and tell it becomes a part of you. There is no way you are going to grasp everything in one night. You are on a journey. I've been walking with the Lord Jesus Christ now for 27 years and some of the same scriptures that I've read when I first got saved, when I read it now, it ha it have so much more meaning. It's it's like it's like the scriptures, it's growing. It, that, that's just the personality of God. You are not going to know everything about God in one night. You you are on a journey. So we will begin tonight in the word of God in the book of John chapter 14 verses 16 through 18 and I'm taking my time. I'm teaching. Amen. I am teaching. I want to take my time. 
I believe what I'm teaching you on tonight. I believe because of the emphasis that Jesus himself have placed on the Holy Ghost. I believe the teaching of the Holy Ghost apart from Jesus Christ himself. Next after the teaching of the Lord Jesus, faith in Christ, salvation in Christ. I believe the most important teaching for the church today is the importance of understanding the Holy Ghost. You have a comforter. It is the Holy Ghost. So we get into the word right now. So John 14 verse 16, Jesus said, now Jesus was getting ready. He was getting ready to bring his ministry, his physical ministry, his, with his physical body. His mission had been accomplished had almost been accomplished. He was about to go to Calvary. He was about to go and be crucified. He was about to be offered up as a living sacrifice, as, as the sacrificial lamb of God to save you and me, to shed his blood that you and I could receive forgiveness of sins. Now the disciples, he prophesied it. He told them that when he go to Jerusalem, that he will be crucified. And after they heard that, the disciples, they were pretty much in turmoil. I would have been too if I was there because Jesus was their teacher. He was their mentor. He was their instructor. He was a spiritual father to his apostles, even though some of them might have been older than him. He was their spiritual father. He recognized, he re they recognized him as their teacher, their Messiah. They looked up to him. They depended on him to advise them. They depended on him for answers. He worked great miracles in their presence. They watch him. They watch the Holy Spirit work through Christ to open the eyes of the blind, unstop the ears of the deaf, cause the cripples to walk. They saw the miracle of the five loaves and the two fishes that fed 5,000 5, men beside women and children. They saw him walk on the water. They saw him spoke to the storm and said, peace be still. So when Jesus told his disciples that he was getting ready to go back into heaven, they were just in turmoil because in their minds, they were thinking, oh my gosh, we are going to have to fend for ourselves. What are we going, what are we going to do without Jesus. He is always here. We've never seen anything like this. And now Jesus is getting ready to go. What are we going to do? Jesus knew all of these things were going on inside their lives and inside their mind. Jesus knew what they were going through. So Jesus begins to teach on the comforter. Just say it tonight. I have a comforter. Watch what he says. <clears throat> Excuse me. He said, and I will pray the Father. I'm reading from the King James Version, John 14, 16 through 18. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Just give me a few minutes, and I'm going to break the word comforter down. In verse 17, Jesus said, even the spirit of truth. The comforter is also called the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it sees him not neither knows him but Jesus says you will know him for he dwells with you right now the Holy Ghost was with them because he was in Christ and then Jesus said but there's coming a time he shall be in you excuse me so Jesus said right now, because the Holy Ghost was in Christ with the apostles, but Jesus said there is coming a time. He's not just going to be with you, but the Holy Ghost will live on the inside of you. Watch this. And then he tells them in verse eight and verse 18, he says, I will not leave you comfortless. In other words, I will not leave you as a orphan, as a orphan. I will not leave you to fend for yourselves. And then he tell them I will come to you and I know this was all they were confused what do you mean you're going to come to us you just told us you're about to go to Jerusalem and be crucified you're about to return to the father but he was still explaining things to them and then when we get down to verse 26 I'm going to read verse 26 from the amplified classic version of the Bible now Jesus begins to go into more detail to help them understand who he was talking about when he said when he said the comforter watch this he said in verse 26 but the comforter the comforter 
which the comforter, the Holy Spirit, or the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, Jesus said, he will teach you all things, and he will cause you to recall everything I have told you. So Jesus said, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. Now let's take our time and go into the word comforter, because the word comforter, the word comforter have six meanings. And when you understand what each one of these words for the meaning comforter means, it will begin to paint a better picture for you and I, who the Holy Spirit is, that's living on the inside of you and me. So Jesus said, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, the word comforter means counselor. I'm going to take my time with this. It means counselor. The word, the word comforter means helper. The word comforter means intercessor. The word comforter means advocate. The word comforter means a strengthener. And the word comforter also means a standby. Let me say that again. The word Comforter means counselor, means helper, means intercessor, means advocate, means strengthener, and means standby. And Jesus said, this is who is coming to live on the inside of you. Let me, let me read this a little further, and then I'll come back and explain those words. He said, but the comforter, the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, in my presence place to represent me and act on my behalf. Jesus said the comforter whom the father will send in my name, the Holy Ghost whom the father will send in my name, in my name means in my place to represent me and act on my behalf. In other words, exactly who I was to you when I was here in the flesh, when the Holy Ghost come, he's called the Spirit of God. He's called the Spirit of Christ. He's called the Spirit of the living God. Are you hearing me? Jesus said, when he comes, he is coming in my place to represent me and act on my behalf. You, you could, um, it's almost like having the invisible Christ with us. Us. The Holy Ghost is his representative in your life and in my life right now. If you are saved, washing the blood, if you are born again, the Holy Ghost lives on the inside of you. Whether you speak in tongues or not, it have nothing to do with it. If you have been born again and washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost lives in you. I just want you to repeat these words. I have have a comforter praise God so when Jesus used the words in verse in verse 16 of John 14 and said but I will pray the father and he shall give you another comforter the word another in the Greek means alon it means another of the same exact kind in other words the same power that I displayed when I was with you when the Holy Ghost comes to live on the inside of you he will display the same power Power, the Holy Ghost in me that's working these miracles when he comes to live inside of you you will begin to see the exact same miracles that I wrought because it was not me it was the Holy Ghost in me that was producing the miracles I dare somebody to type these words the Holy Ghost is a proof producer he is a miracle worker he is a proof producer my God my God I got to take my time with this because I got to get you to get it. Amen. So I want you to type those words again. I have a comforter. I have a comforter. So the first word, the first word for the word comforter, it's counselor. The word counselor means someone who gives advice about problems, someone who advises you in troubled times. He helps you bring, he helps you bring solutions to your problems to your situations to your difficulties the Holy Ghost will take the word of God and use it in your mind and get it down in your heart to bring direction he will advise you he will direct you he will instruct you he will teach you so Jesus said when the comforter comes so the first meaning for the word comfort is counselor the Holy Ghost is there to advise you and remember Jesus said he is going to dwell in you and he is going to be in you forever 
He's not going to be there for a week. He's not going to be there for a night. He's not going to be there for a couple years. The Holy Ghost comes to live on the inside of you and me forever. I just dare somebody to shout it. I have. <laughs> I have a comforter. I have a comforter. I'm not in this by myself. I'm not in this by myself. I got a comforter. He is called the Holy Ghost. He is called the Spirit of the Sovereign God. He is called the Spirit of the Lord. He is called the Spirit of Christ. Shout it! I have a comforter! My God, my God, my God. Now watch this. So so the first meaning for the word comforter, it means counselor. The second meaning for the word comforter means helper. Now the word helper, and listen, this is who you got living on the inside of you. I, are you hearing me? This is who you have living on the inside of you. It's like having the invisible Christ live on the inside of us, but it's the Holy Ghost. He is the representative of Christ. I remember a long time ago when I first got saved and I would read my Bible and see the miracles that Jesus would perform and the things that he would do among his disciples. I would make this statement just out of ignorance and, and just pure passion. I would say, my God, I wish Jesus was here with me like he was with those apostles. That's because I was growing in my faith. You know, as you grow with God, you are always going from glory to glory, from faith to faith. What you don't know today, you'll know tomorrow or next year. You just got to hang in there. You just got to hang with Jesus. And then as I begin to grow, grow in my faith and I listen to other men of God, teach the word of God like Kenneth Hagin and other great men of God and great women of God, that have gone on our W. Shambach. Some of those great, I mean, come on somebody. Those people were veterans. Uh, Pastor John Osteen. I mean, I learned a lot from listening to those men. Ryan Hutt Bunky. Pastor Benny Hinn, who's still alive. Listen, I learned a lot. So, so, so I, I begin to understand that the Holy Ghost, he is Christ's representative. When Christ said, the Holy Ghost, whom I will send, whom the Father will send, in my name, in action, he means in my place to represent me and act on my behalf. That means the same power that I'm displaying among the apostles right now. When the Holy Ghost comes, he will display the same kind of power that I'm displaying in your midst. The same way the Holy Ghost worked through me to open the eyes of the blind, to unstop the ears of the deaf, to cause the cripples to get up and walk, to calm the rage and see. When the Holy Ghost comes, he will empower you. He will equip you to do the same kind of miracle because when he comes, he is coming in my name, in my place, in the same power, in the same authority. And he can do whatever I did in the flesh whilst I was with you. You have a comforter. It's the Holy Ghost. He is the Holy Ghost. Shout! I have a comforter. I do have to face this trouble, this trial, this tribulation by myself. I've got the representative of Christ with me and the same power that was available to Jesus, that was available to the apostles. It's available right now through the Holy Ghost. Shout! I have a comforter. My God, I feel the anointing. Hey, I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel, my God, I feel the Holy Ghost. You are not by yourself. You are not alone. The Holy Ghost, he is with you. Every time you get up in the morning, every time you go to bed at night, he is with you every second, every minute, every hour, every day, every week, every month, every year. He is with you. Shout it. I'm not by myself. You are not left alone. 
Jesus did not leave you out and off and up. He did not leave you here to fend for yourself. It's the ministry and the assignment of the Holy Ghost. He will teach you. He will lead you. He will guide you. His power will be displayed in your life. That's why the Apostle Paul said, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that works in us. He was talking about the Holy Ghost. Jesus said, You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Somebody shout, I got power from the Holy Ghost. Shout power. Shout power. My God, my God. I feel it tonight. Glory to God. Now watch this. I, I got to go on teaching here, but I'm trying to just help you to get this thing tonight. Now watch this. So the word counselor, because remember the word comforter has six different meanings. And as I explain these words to you, now you begin to understand that you are not by yourself. And the Holy Ghost, the representative of Christ, he is on the inside of you right now. And this is why I try to teach some of you. When the power of God begins to move, you don't have to beg. This is why. Because the Holy Ghost lives in you. Listen. I've got, we've got we've recorded some testimonies here a few months ago. Some some ladies have written in to us to let me know, Pastor Sean. I couldn't give I couldn't get pregnant for nothing. And she said, she said, I was I, I had made a visit to the to the doctor, you know, I forget what type of doctor it is. Those doctors that help with with the with with a woman who is having complications being able to get pregnant. I forgot what type of doctor they called it. My mind went blank because I'm focused on preaching tonight. So and she said, Pastor, I just couldn't get pregnant for nothing. And she said, I began to listen to your broadcast and the power of God would touch me. The power of God. Oh, a fertility doctor. That's right. It's called a fertility doctor. She said I I just couldn't get pregnant. So the doctor, she went to the doctor and he, she was about to go back and about to start the process, whatever, and keep going to get advice and the process. And she said, Pastor, I got good news for you. She said, I was making all of my plans. <laughs> she said, but, but I'm here to tell you, I didn't have to go back to the fertility doctor because Dr. Jesus <laughs> visit my house. Now I am pregnant. I'm about to give birth. In the next eight or nine months, I'm going to give back. So yes. How did it happen? I'll tell you how it happened. I'll tell you how it happened. Jesus is not here in the flesh. But the Holy Ghost. But the Holy Ghost. So we back into John chapter 14 verse 26. And it is, it is absolutely, it is absolutely crucial for you to understand the importance importance and the work of the Holy Ghost in your life as the representative of Christ. So we got there. So we said the first meaning for the word comforter is counselor, someone who gives advice. The second meaning for the word comforter is helper. The word helper is a person who contributes to the fulfillment of a need or furtherance of an effort or purpose. So the Holy Ghost is at work in your life to help fulfill the purpose of God in you. Even the Apostle Paul said it. He said, it is the power of God that's working in me mightily. Are you listening to me tonight? I just dare somebody to say it tonight. I have a comforter. I have a comforter. I have a comforter. My God, this is good news for me tonight. I said, I have a comforter. Glory to God. So the first word for the word comfort is counsel. And then we look at the second word. It means helper. The third meaning for the word comforter is intercessor. Now I know we, we hear 
We hear a lot of people, they, they, they say, oh, I, I'm an intercessor. And of course, they, they are intercessor, but the real intercessor is the Holy Ghost that lives on the inside of them. Because the Apostle Paul made a statement in Romans chapter 8, verse 26 through 28. The Apostle Paul said, for when we know not, my God, when we know not what we should pray for as we are, the Holy Ghost, he makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered because he that searches the heart knows the mind of the Holy Ghost and he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God and then it brings us to verse 28 and because the Holy Ghost the intercessor is on the inside of us moving us anointing us to intercede over a problem over a circumstance over a situation the apostle Paul said because you have the help of the Holy Ghost he goes on to verse 28 and said we know that all things it works together for good to them that love God who are called according to his purpose shout I got an intercessor he lives in me it's called he is called the Holy Ghost he is called the Holy Ghost shout it the intercessor the prayer warrior he lives inside of me that's why Daniel was able to pray that's why Moses was able to intercede effectively that's why Joshua that's why David they were men of prayer that's why Jesus he prayed all night unto God he was able to do it because the Holy Ghost is an intercessor he'll empower you I know nights like that where me and my wife we stayed up all night and sought God until we got a breakthrough but it was not us in our flesh it was the power of the Holy Ghost it was the power of the resurrected Christ in the form of the Holy Ghost Jesus said I'll give you another comforter that's why that woman she got pregnant watching this broadcast because the comforter which is the Holy Ghost the representative of Christ the same God that did it through Elisha it is the same God it is the same Holy Ghost that lives in me it is the same Holy Ghost that lives in you and we say to God be the glory for the great things that he have done if God opened the eyes of the blind it's the Holy Ghost if God unstopped the ears of the deaf it's the Holy Ghost if he make the dumb speak it's the Holy Ghost if he cause the cripples to get up and walk it's the Holy Ghost the Apostle Paul said it's not I but it's Christ the representative of Christ he lives in me shout Holy Ghost shout it Holy Ghost Holy Ghost if you watch this broadcast and you feel the anointing come on you and you break and start crying if you watch this broadcast and the pain in your body leaves it's the Holy Ghost it's the Holy Ghost and because of the Holy Ghost the representative of Christ he is here he lives in us he is here in the authority of Christ he is here in the name of Christ that's why watching this broadcast we can't touch you physically but it's the power of the Holy Ghost it's the anointing of the Holy Ghost shout I have a comforter my God I feel the anointing tonight yeah, I feel the Holy Ghost hallelujah hallelujah 
my God another word for the another word for comforter is advocate that means a lawyer who pleads a cause to argue in favor of if you got a court case the Holy Ghost will give that will give your lawyer wisdom he'll give him the words that will rule in your favor he will argue for you he'll plead your cause before the king of kings and the lord of lords he is the representative of christ whatever trouble you are facing right now the holy ghost the holy ghost will anoint you he'll give you the words to pray he is pleading your cause that's why in a worship service you begin to cry you begin to weep you lift your hands to heaven the apostle paul said god have sent forth the spirit of his dear son into our hearts crying abba father when the tears begin to flow it's the work of the holy ghost in your life another word for comfort to means strengthener someone who is designed to provide additional strength the holy ghost will strengthen you in trying times the lord is my slide and my salvation whom shall i fear the lord is the strength of my life of whom shall i be afraid the holy ghost in the book of first corinthians the apostle paul said the lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty another name for the word holy ghost is lord adonai he is a leader a part of the trinity you got god the father you have god the son and you have god the holy ghost you are not in this by yourself the Holy Ghost will give you a strength. He'll cause you to stand. He'll make you stand in the midst of trials, in the midst of tribulations, in the midst of fear, in the midst of panic. The Holy Ghost, it will give you a strength that you can stand against the wiles of the devil and having done all to stand, shout stand and keep on standing. Another meaning for the word comforter is the word stand by. The word stand by is a person who is ready for an emergency. Somebody that you can rely on in the midst of trouble, in the midst of pain, in the midst of uncertainty. I stop by to tell somebody, you are not in this by yourself. You have a comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. Jesus said, he will be my representative and he will act on my behalf. The Holy Ghost is equal to having Christ with his disciples. He will teach you. He will lead you. He will guide you. He will advise you. He will work for you. He will make a way where there seems to be no way. He will give you power over the devil. Power over sickness. Power over trouble. Power over tribulations. Shout power. Shout power. Shout power. Shout power. After this corona epidemic is over, you will still be here. Because God is on your side. This battle is not yours. It belongs to the Lord. The Holy Ghost is with you. Shout it. I have a comforter. We coming out more than a conqueror. We coming out. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But out of them all, the Lord delivers us. Somebody shout. The Lord 
is my deliverer. The Holy Ghost. He lives in me. He will protect you in the time of trouble. In the time of storm. He will bring you out. Shout it. I have a comforter. My God, my God, my God, my God, my God. Oh, somebody help me give him praise tonight. Oh, we love you. We love you. Glory to Jesus. We love you. Come on, saints, just give him praise. We love you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We love you. We love you, Jesus. Spirit of the living God. Glory to God. Spirit of the living God. Fall afresh on me. Mighty God you are. Spirit of the living God. Fall afresh on me. Melt me and mold me. Melt me. Mold me. Feel me. Use me. Spirit of the living God. Fall afresh on me. Listen, you know, we'll continue to build on this message the next several weeks. But I want you to know something tonight. What we are teaching tonight, this is real. The Holy Spirit is real. He is the representative of Christ on this earth. The Holy Ghost is the most powerful person on this earth right now. Every miracle that happens in your bodies while you're watching this broadcast, that is the Holy Spirit. He is representing Christ. And the same way if Jesus would hear, was here, he would heal you. That's what the Holy Ghost is doing. He's bringing those miracles to you in the name of Christ, in Christ's authority. He's the one that's healing you. And this is why we tell you, don't beg when the power of God's moving. People are healing our meetings right in their seats without even coming up. A man and his wife from Farmington, New Mexico, they wrote us. They wrote a good testimony on the one of our videos. He said, Pastor Sean, when you were in Farmington the last time, she said, my husband was unable to walk. He could stand, but he was unable to walk because he had a problem for several months in one of his legs. He was in his, in his right leg, I believe. He was attending the doctor for it getting all kinds of tests they just couldn't figure out what was wrong but it cost him his legs swollen he was not able to walk for months and he said pastor sean when you were in farmington i didn't even come up he said because i had faith and i believed god i was believing god in my seat for healing he said whilst you were praying for other people i sat in sat in that chair he said the power of god his wife testified he, his wife said the power of god went into my husband's leg and now my husband can walk again she said our family is amazed she said our friends and our family can verify this she said now the doctors are amazed she said because my husband can now walk and we are so happy you know how he got healed because pastor sean was there no he got healed because he had faith and when he had faith, the Holy Spirit moved in his direction and healed that man. It's the Holy Spirit. He is Christ's representative. Someone's being healed in their right hand. I believe someone with some type of arthritis in their right hand. I felt it. 
you are being healed right now the Holy Ghost is healing you right now the Holy Ghost someone is being healed in their right hand and it's actually listen that pain shoots up right into that finger that's next to your small finger the pain shoots through your hand and it goes right up into this this finger right here next to your small finger the pain comes right up into there you are being healed right now by the power of God you are being healed you, listen begin to move your hands begin to open and close that hand your right hand the power of God is healing you right now you are being healed right this second my God my God my God my God the power of God that's the Holy Ghost you just receive a miracle in your right hand begin to open and close that hand and of course we don't have the chat open but you can email us your testimony to info at seanpinder.net info at seanpinder.net info at seanpinder.net so in your right hand you are receiving a miracle right now the pain is gone receive your miracle that's the work of the Holy Ghost the Holy Ghost lives in you and he released the power of Christ you are healed I mean that it happened quick you had that sharp pain going through your hand I don't know what caused that problem but it's gone the pain is gone and we cannot wait to get your testimony I believe many of you are being healed listen when the power of God begins to move like this he knows what he knows the problem everybody is facing just lay your hands on the part of your body where you need a miracle where you need a healing from the Lord tonight and the Holy Ghost will bring that miracle into your body just lay your hands on the part of your body where you need God to touch you right now the healing power of God is here receive your miracle in the name of Jesus receive it in your right leg in your left leg all through your body I rebuke arthritis in the name of Jesus I rebuke it in the name of Jesus glory to God the power of God the power of God the power of God someone's being healed from the center of your stomach from the center of your stomach shooting down the center of your stomach then moving over towards the right your right the right bottom side of your stomach the Holy Ghost is healing you it's the power of God this is not magic this is not gimmicks this is the work of the Holy Ghost the Holy Ghost speaks he reveals the Holy Ghost speaks he reveals he works miracles in the name of Christ receive the touch of the Holy Ghost right now in the name of Jesus the power of God's flowing some people are even being healed in their left hand just listen even if I don't call it out the Spirit of God is here the power of God for miracles is here lay your hands on the part of your body where you need a miracle and say Lord don't pass me by tonight I lay my hands on this part of my body and I ask you to heal me in the name of Jesus oh glory to God the power of God is flowing for you are great you are great you do miracles so great there is no one else like you sing it to him church there is no one else like you for well, you are great you do miracles so great there is no one else like you there is no one else like you you deserve the glory and you deserve glory and the honor as we lift our hands in worship as we bless your holy name you deserve the glory and the honor as we lift our hands in worship sing it as we bless your holy name for you are great sing it you do miracles so great there is no one else like you sing it to him church there is no one else like you 
For well, you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. Singing, you deserve. And you deserve glory. And the honor. As we lift our hands, worship. As we bless your holy name. You deserve the glory. And the honor. As we lift our hands and worship. As we bless your holy name. For you are great. Sing it to him. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. Come on, church. There is no one else like you. For you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else. Receive the power of the Holy Ghost. Receive the power of the Holy Ghost in your body. Be healed from that sickness, that disease, that pain. Be healed in the name of Jesus. You can be healed without even feeling anything. Come on. Just receive a healing in your body. And right now, begin to, begin to do what you couldn't do before. Do something you couldn't do. Check your bodies. Do what you couldn't do before. Check your bodies. And write us. Info at seanpinder.net Keep it up there, Samuel. Info at seanpinder.net Email us your testimony. So great. There is no one else like you. Listen. Write us your healing testimony. I surrender all. Listen, there is a greater miracle than healing of the sick. The greatest miracle is when somebody surrenders their life to the Lord Jesus. And I want to give someone an opportunity to surrender their lives to the Lord Jesus on tonight. He loves you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Now the Holy Spirit is stopping me. Go back to my flow. Because someone is being healed on the bottom left and right side of their stomach. The miracle power of God is still flowing. And I'll come back to lead some people to Christ. But the miracle working power of God is still flowing right now. People are still being healed. Now I'm obeying the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost pulled me back into this direction. I want you to receive your miracle right now. Jesus is the healer. The, and the Holy Ghost who is here as his representative is bringing the healing of the resurrected Christ into your bodies right now. Receive the healing in the name of Jesus. That problem from the left, from the bottom left side of your stomach that goes all the way across to the right side of your stomach. Be healed, many of you. Be healed tonight. You're being healed right now. The Holy Ghost is healing you. Miracles are happening. My God, my God, my God. Hallelujah. Oh, receive tonight. Receive tonight. Oh, hallelujah. Receive your miracle tonight. Hallelujah. Receive your miracle tonight. Receive your miracle tonight. People are being healed. And after you get healed, go and let your doctor verify it. The power of God can stand under any doctor's test. Oh, and I'm all for doctors. Trust me, I'm not against doctors. Thank God for doctors and physicians. But the power of God is healing some people. Some people get nervous and afraid to go and get things confirmed. Go and get your checkup. You will get your miracle verified in the name of Jesus. Now I want to give some people the opportunity who have not yet surrendered their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ. 
He loves you. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. He loves you. And if you're ready to surrender your life to Jesus, it's time to repent. We are in the last days. The signs of the times are all around us. Jesus is coming again. And you have an opportunity tonight. Take advantage of it. I know people would say, well, when God ready, he will get me saved. That's not true. He already sent Jesus to die for you. But the Bible does say the word is near you, even in your mouth. That if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. So you are not waiting on God to save you. God's waiting on you to make confession unto salvation. So you can be saved right now. Pray the prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner in need of a Savior. I ask you to forgive me of all of my sins right now. I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth that you were crucified, buried in a borrowed tomb, and on the third day, God raised you from the dead. You are now seated at God's right hand. And soon and very soon, you are coming again. Thank you, Jesus, for forgiving me of all of my sins and writing my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Listen, if you prayed that prayer and meant it with all of your hearts, let me and Pastor Amy be the first to say to you, Welcome into the kingdom of God. If you've just surrendered your life to Jesus, email us, info at seanpinder.net. Email us and let us know you've just surrendered your life to the Lord Jesus Christ because we want to give a shout out to all of you welcome into the kingdom of god we love you we know some of you we know many of you are surrendering and giving your lives to the lord jesus on tonight we love you with an everlasting love we say welcome into the kingdom i want you to take a look at my book commercial i wrote a book in november we launched it in november and whenever you can it will be a good book for you to add to your library it'll be a blessing to you here it goes it's here the book we've been waiting for seven ways the holy spirit speaks to us a complete guide to hearing god pastor sean pinner gives readers life-changing keys on exploring understanding and experiencing the voice of god which every believer can hear on a daily basis packed with powerful revelations this book shares the methods means and motivations for the voice of god and provide answers to questions like how to hear God, recognize His voice, tap into His guidance, and much more. Receive confidence on hearing God through the Word, dreams and visions, divine impressions, and more. And discover a much deeper and more intimate walk with the Lord. Order 7 Ways the Holy Spirit Speaks Today. Available on Amazon and all major book suppliers. Your journey into the powerful realms of God's voice starts here.